Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of the program. Uh, today we're going to talk about these Langer monkeys from uh, Southern Asia and more specifically the Indus Valley Civilization uh, were identified in ancient Greek artwork in the Cyclades, not Cyclades, in the Mediterranean, which used to be the Cyclades um, Empire, which is basically the island of Thera, where uh, I did a few episodes, maybe a year ago or so, uh, uh, detailing these tree rings and the dating of the volcanic eruption on the island and all of that uh, good stuff. So they found, they re-examined these murals, which depicted these, uh, these Langer monkeys here. Now, why is this important? Well, the Langer monkeys d never lived in Greece. They never lived in this area. Again, as I mentioned before, they're from Nepal, Bhutan, uh, northern India, possibly Afghanistan. Uh, let me just zoom out of the map here. And you can see that's a pretty far distance from these murals here in Akrotiri all the way, if you go further east, beyond Egypt, beyond the Levant, beyond uh, the Persian Gulf, beyond all that stuff. They're usually around, they were found here. So what does that mean? Why is that important? Well, that means the Mycenaean civilization, w again, located, and possibly the Minoans and the Cycladic civilizations uh, of this time were in some sort of, they had some sort of trade route, some sort of relationship where they were share exchanging culture, um, goods, and all of that stuff. And again, speaks to this uh, network of trade and commerce going on at that time. Now, if you guys don't really know much about history or you're, th this is all peripheral knowledge to you, this is a big deal just because there's a lot of stuff going on at this time. And I have a timeline that, ha that has uh, some in very interesting dates and events that happen that I'll go through um, in the second part of this video. But let's just uh, examine these wall paintings more for a second. So these primatologists re-examined the wall paintings of monkeys in a Minoan uh, building buried in volcanic ash around 1600 BC at the site of Akrotiri, which is again located on Thera in the Aegean Sea. Uh, no monkeys are known to have lived in Greece at the time. So again, there's only one other way that they could have gotten there, and that's they were imported. So if to get monkeys like this to be imported there had to be, have been a lot of them for them to have even recorded these on murals so that could mean a lot of the things it could mean that it was a status symbol to have these um maybe it's telling a story uh there's a lot of stuff here but anyway the point is that th th this trade was going on long enough to where it imprinted itself into the mycenaean culture and its civilization itself which is very very interesting most of the monkeys in the painting are identified as olive baboons, which are native to Egypt, but one monkey with distinctive fur and S-shaped tail is identified as a gray langur, which is this guy here. And you can see he does have, even though it's resting on this branch here, it is an S-shaped tail. And these guys are, again, native to Nepal, Bhutan, and northern India. So the Indus Valley Civilization, uh, just a real quick uh, background, they weren't discovered until about the 1920s. And at the time, they really didn't know where to place them in history. Even to this day, there are very, uh, the, no one really knows exactly when they started and when they uh, ended. Um, they, they do have dates, obviously, but they, they are on par with ancient Egypt in terms of uh, how old they are. And I've done a few videos on, on the Indus Valley civilization and where they could possibly come from and all that stuff. But either way, uh, very much like the Phoenicians, which I'll talk about in, in a few minutes, um, they were they, their influence was felt all along the, the old world, at least. And um, they, they were peripherally in other histories. When you examine other histories, they are mentioned, I guess, second, I guess, second degree mention, I guess, is how you would call it. They're not direct, but they would they are um, hinted at their existence is hinted at like people in the east and all that stuff. As well as uh, the uh, the Chinese, the ancient Chinese um, empire as well, and dynasties as well. One thing that I wanted to mention were the, the these uh, Phoenicians here. Now the Phoenicians are very are shrouded in mystery. 
Um, some people say that their networks extended beyond the Mediterranean. A lot of people believe that they found North America and they were bringing gold back from North America into the old world. And they were able to go beyond um, Africa, go down to the southern tip of Africa through the uh, Straits of Gibraltar, which is uh, here you can see. Um, there are a lot of, they're very legendary, but also very mysterious. They were existing as far back as 2600, 2500 BC, all the way until uh, 300 or so BC, allegedly. So uh, why are they important? Well, during this time, 1600s, they were right at the peak of their civilization. They were uh, trading, they were connecting all kinds of different kingdoms and uh, different peoples together with their trade routes. They had their own distinctive pottery, all of these things. So they could be, they are proof that these trade networks were uh, alive and running at the time. And they could have played a part in uh, bringing either they directly brought the monkeys or facilitated <laughs> bringing the monkeys to uh, this island, or they were coexisting along other trade routes that were doing so. So I thought that was very interesting. So let's take a look at the timeline. And the timeline is very uh, interesting. So again, 2500 to 300, we have these Phoenicians. They were Semitic speaking, um, living in the Mediterranean, originated in the Levant again. So again, the Levant is very important crossroads that connected a bunch of different people and different, a bunch of different civilizations. So uh, again, they, they, they could have greased the wheels in a sense in terms of uh, trading uh, culture and, and language and dealing with a bunch of different people from, from far off places in that uh, time and place of the world uh, in history. Again, they were establishing and maintaining their maritime trade routes because, again, they're a largely maritime nation. And then we go into the 1690s, the Minoan and Harappan civilizations. Again, the Harappans were living uh, in Indus Valley area at the time, and they were existing... Uh, in Crete and ancient India, respectively. And then all throughout this time, a period of 200 years, um, the hurry and con conquest were happening. And the reason why this is uh, relevant is because, and this, this map goes back to 2300 BC, uh, back in ancient Sumer. So this is about five, 600 years before the time period we're talking about. But they were, uh, th they started off really small and then they started uh, 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 destroying everybody around them, essentially. And um, their rise, again, is important because geographically speaking, they are right between um, these, the, these island nations here, the, the, the ancient Mycenaeans, the, ancient, the first Greeks here, and uh, all the way east to uh, where these monkeys would come from, uh, ancient India. So um, a, a lot of stuff is going on at this time too. So I think that's very interesting. We have, we have monkeys going from one place to another. We have the end of all kinds of kingdoms. We have the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt. Um, depending on who you ask that, that is either, uh, historically factual or it's, uh, just a made up story that is, uh, um, sort of, a, a symbolic of something else. No, ma that does, doesn't matter who you ask. Either way, around this time uh, was allegedly when the Israelites went from Egypt. Another very interesting thing is the end of the Middle Kingdom of ancient Egypt. This is 1674 is a very important year because this is when the second intermediate period starts. And um, that is when the Hyksos in invaded uh Egypt at the time it was almost depending on who you ask again it was like a coup d'etat or they just they weren't from Egypt they came in they were they were migrants from another area and they just ended up uh, usurping the throne for two dynasties so um, again or three dynasties rather 15 to 17 dynasties um, so again this is a period of change uh, and with change comes a lot of different uh, societal impacts and all that stuff. So 1655, the Elamite Empire, the, the ruler Elamite Empire dies, and that was a neighboring empire uh, to um, the aforementioned, the aforementioned Hurrians and, and uh, ancient Sumer and, all, and ancient Mes Mesopotamians. 
So they, they die. The Greeks, 1650 is when the Greeks start to come into uh, Mycenae and they start to uh, build their empire, which starts around 1600s. And then, um, and then we have some other uh, uh, ancient works come, come to light, like the Rhine Mathematical Papyrus, which is from, um, is, is a document from ancient Egypt. Uh, the Flotilla Fresco, again, um, in Akrotiri. So a lot was going on at the time. This, all of this is indicative of, of a highly advanced, sophisticated um, civilization that, that we definitely know about, but there was, a, again, a lot going on. There was a lot of sophisticated stuff going on that we could really, it'd be really difficult to understand without knowing the historical context and the geographical context and the economical uh, co uh, context of what was going on in the area. Again, these exchanges of ideas. Um, this is not new. And by the way, this is not just developing. This is already fully formed and going. So even though the, the Mycenaeans didn't really officially get going until around the 1600s, um, before then, it wasn't like it, there was nothing going on. I mean, they were inheriting stuff. There, was, uh, there were trends there were, that go way back um, centuries uh, before. So... Again, this is not just stuff that happens all of a sudden. This is stuff that was going on for a while. And um, who knows, this, could, this type of behavior, this type of um, uh, uh, civilizing and trading and, and prospering could have gone back way, way before. Um, because again, the, the recorded history is very, very such a short window when we talk about um, humans because humans, obviously, if you've seen uh, my previous episodes about prehistory, prehistoric humans, uh, pre-recorded history, um, there's a there's a long, long, there's a very, 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 very long time that humans were interacting with other types of humans, and and perhaps uh, similar things are going on because you know there are uh, cave paintings and all these other. Uh, uh, the, the the lion man from the Stadel cave in, in uh, Germany, all of these things, these anthropomorphic uh, depictions and all that stuff, again, go back into uh, the upper Paleolithic period, which is, again, like 50,000 uh, 50, years ago, 40,000 years ago. So um, perhaps everything that we're talking about here is just a repeat of what humans tend to do when they have empires and maritime trade routes and all this stuff uh, 1627 this is really interesting we have some climate uh, events going on and i did an episode on this the beginning of a period of cooling of the world climate lasting several years because of volcanic eruptions all over the islands so the minoan eruption of thera um, the eruption of Mount Vesuvius, the eruption of Mount Aniachak, all of these things were going on at the same time. And again, tree ring anal analysis, I have a video on that. Um, I think I did it like maybe eight, nine months ago or something like that. Very interesting stuff. I highly recommend you guys go back and check it out. Um, and then we have a series of, of power switching hands all within five years. So 1625, a new king of Babylon. 1621, new king of Assyria. 1620, the new king of the Hittite Empire. So again, all of these, we have a, a change in power, um, new, new uh, hegemony, new, new order uh, going on. So again, um, this is very important when talking about um, these, these hypothetical uh, trade routes. Um, and then the end of the 14th dynasty in Egypt around the 1600s, creation of uh, more astronomical documents. So again, we have this advanced knowledge of, uh, of um, uh, like astronomy and, and all of these other things. So again, the, the Babylonian library of Asher Bani Paul, this is, this is on par with the library of Alexandria. Um, tons and tons of knowledge and accumulated um, um, wh whether it's religious or not, mathematics, all of these advanced things, uh, science, like science in its true sense, were being stored um, at this time. And, and again, the, the, the amount of stuff that they knew during this time period is just would boggle your mind um, if, you, if you don't know much about it or you have, again, a peripheral knowledge of this stuff. I highly recommend you, you guys go in and really look into this. 
Um, obviously, I don't have the time to really go through everything here, but these are some, again, some of the notable things that were going on. End of the Indus Valley civilization happens in the 1600s. So again, maybe people were sending these monkeys um, uh, at just as a direct result of of blowing apart the civilization and and just um, exporting it and and exporting its goods, um, exploiting uh, some of the stuff that the Indus Valley was known for at the time. Again, we don't really know exactly what they're known for. Uh, aside from uh, their irrig their advanced irrigation system and all and their city planning and all that stuff, and then another overthrow throw of the ruling Amorite dynasty, a lot of power changing hands during this period of like a hundred or so years. Shang Dynasty instituted in China, tumulus culture started. Um, so again, uh, the Hyksos again take take over. I mentioned that earlier. Nebra Sky Disc in Germany. The foundations of the Olmec civilization in southern Mexico. Now, these two geographically are very far away from what's going on, but I, I think it's worth noting just to uh, mention that there. 1600 BC, Cycladic civilization ends and the Mycenaeans start. Uh, the Mask of Ag Agamemnon, funerary mask. Um, the Hittite iron tools and weapons start. So, again, we have all this innovation and stuff going on. It seems to be a, a real. Uh, a golden age of sorts of, of novelty, uh, for lack of a better term. Um, and then the, the ancient Greeks start moving into the mainland. Um, Hittites start to establish the capital of Hattusa. So this is in Turkey. And again, Turkey, on foot anyway, is how they would get to these trade routes or they would go through uh, either Egypt or um, Israel. Uh, now, I'm not saying, by the way, I, I think this goes without saying, but I'll just uh, say it now. I don't think that there were direct trade routes from, um, although there could be, from ancient India directly to the Cyclades. Or it could have been they just made their way. Maybe they were trading with the Elamites here or maybe with um, some of the powers in, in modern day Iran and such um, here. And then they just um, made their way through second or third degree trade routes back to um to the mycenaeans and then ba babylon 1595 the sack of babylon and then the second intermediate uh period ends. so around 1570 um and 1572 the death of moses so again all of these uh things are going on anyway um let me know what you guys think about this about this timeline um i i, I Obviously, you guys noticed by now there's no video. I'm going to get a new um, streaming type of uh, camera so I don't have to use the, the, bad, the bad one. I, I've been having to use the past couple of episodes, basically my, my, my webcam on, on, the, on the computer is really fuzzy and I just the frames are really low and I just thought it would be better without it until I get the really high quality, the 1080p uh, 60 FPS one or whatever. Um, just so you guys can see my beautiful face a lot easier. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, let me know what you guys think about this, about the, the Phoenicians. Uh, I forget, one, a few of you guys had a lot of information on the Phoenicians, and, and um, you guys turned me on to some, some of the works where uh, F Phoenicians were, again, highly um, uh, suspected of making their way to North America and mining gold there and coming back. So um, if you guys have anything like that or any of the other uh, empires and civilizations that I mentioned before, please let me know in the comments and I'll talk to you guys later.